So we will continue with the electromagnetic spectrum. So we had discussed last time up, up to the visible light. Now we are, uh, so we had already discussed these parts. Now we are going to discuss the remaining three over here. The next one is infrared radiation. These are electromagnetic waves of wavelength in the range 8000 m strong to 10 raised to 7 m strong. The infrared part of the spectrum was first detected by William Herschel in, the, in about 1800. Detection. If a thermometer U having its bulb blackened is moved from the violet end towards the red end of the spectrum of the visible light, it is observed that there is a very slow rise in temperature. But when this thermometer is placed moved from the yellow extreme or red extreme, a rapid rise is uh, temperature is noticed. It means that that part of the spectrum beyond red extreme of the violet visible light has certain radiation which produce a strong heating effect, but they are not visible. These radiations are called as infrared or heat radiations. So, what they mean to say is that if I take a thermometer and suppose the thermometer ka ye silvered part hai, that is the bulb over here or ye reading hai, to ye bulb ko agar mein black color coat kar do, and that blackened thermometer if I bring over here, so when it is over here it doesn't get heated so fast. At this point also it doesn't get heated so fast but as soon as I pass this part and go towards here that is towards the red part of the spectrum you find that it gets heated very fast. So it can see it can be seen that apart from the visible light there will be some kind of waves which are there which gives you a much more amount of heating effect than a normal visible light. So that's why we see that this particular part is called as a infrared which has got a strong heating effect. A thermopile can also be used to detect the heat radiation. The galvanometer connected to the thermopile shows deflection when infrared radiations fall on the thermopile. So thermopile also is a very sensitive device which is used to detect the presence of the change in temperature. So this change in temperature can easily be identified by the thermopile and when there is a change in temperature this temperature change in temperature can be detected by the galvanometer reading. So galvanometer will show deflection as there is a change in radiation, change in temperature. So there will be a, a immediate change in the uh, galvanometer reading when it is moved from uh, moved into the infrared radiations. The spectrum of infrared radiation is obtained by using a rock salt prism because a rock salt prism does not absorb the infrared radiation whereas a glass prism absorbs them. So we had seen that in case of the ultraviolet we use a coarse prism whereas now we are going to use a rock salt prism because rock salt does not absorb the UV rays whereas the glass absorbs the UV rays. So because in fact sorry or UV, infrared. The glass will absorb the infrared radiations and the, then the rock salt will not absorb them. So to get the infrared radiation spectrum, we use the prism which is made up of rock salt. Sources of infrared radiation, all red hot bodies such as the heated iron ball, flame, fire, etc. are the sources of infrared radiation. The sun is a natural source of infrared radiation. Properties of infrared radiation, they travel in straight line like light with a speed of 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second in vacuum or in air. They obey the laws of reflection and refraction. If a source of heat, uh, it is a so if a source of heat, say an infrared bulb is placed on the focus of a parabolic mirror, the a parallel infrared beam is obtained. A burning glass that is a convex lens, focus on a more energetic or uh, shorter wavelength infrared radiation obtained from the sun or the paper due to which the paper chars or burns. They do not affect the ordinary photographic film. However, a specially treated photographic film is affected by them. So, infrared radiation has got more heating effect but they do not affect the photographic film. So, they do not have much amount of light. They do not give too much of a light. That's why they do not affect the photographic film. And uh, they they are absorbed by glass but they pass through the rock salt that's why they are the, to obtain it we are taking the prism made up of rock salt they are detected by heating property using a blackened bulb thermometer or a thermopile so for detection you are using a blackened thermometer or thermopile they are scattered less by the earth's atmosphere because of their long wavelength since the intensity of scattered variation is 1 upon lambda raised to 4 
Hence, they can penetrate deep inside the atmosphere even in fog. So, alpha, uh, infrared uh, can penetrate deep in, so inside the fog because they have got a le um, uh, less um, the wavelength over here. We get a wavelength which is long. So, long wavelength because of the long wavelength, they are able to scatter less because we know longer the wavelength, lesser the deviation. So, that due to lesser deviation, they are able to go in a straight line much easily. The greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide present in the Earth's atmosphere absorbs the low energy infrared radiation and keeps the Earth's surface warm. So whatever is the uh, infrared radiation given out by the Earth's surface which is there is going to be blocked by the carbon dioxide layer which is the greenhouse gases on the, in the atmosphere and is going to return it back to the Earth to increase the uh, warmth of the Earth. Harmful effects of infrared radiation, a high dose of infrared radiation may cause skin burns. So infrared radiations, if they are taken and they are high dose, it can cause burning. Uh, this is normally when you are treating, uh, a person is being treated by physiotherapy uh, by the infrared radiations. That's why they need to see to it that the radiation given is not so high, otherwise it will cause a burning. The infrared radiation are used for therapies purpose by doctors. They are used in photography at night and used uh, and also in mist and cloud because they are not much scattered so they can penetrate appreciably through it. So photography in the night or in the fog whenever you want to do it, it is they use infrared radiation infrared because they are not going to be scattered more. So that's the reason they are used for night shootings, night uh, photography. Infrared lamps are used in dark rooms for developing photographs as they provide some visibility without affecting the photographic film. See, photographic films are getting affected by all the different lights, so visible light and all these lights, they are getting affected. So, in a place where the photographic film are being developed or the photographic film is being processed, you cannot have light which is made up of these things. So, the sunlight cannot be used. So, that's why in those places, the infrared lights are used because they will give you a certain amount of light you can see something, but they will not affect the photographic film. They are used as signals during the war and they are not visible and they are not absorbed much in the medium. So, in the wars, they use as signals, they use the infrared, infrared uh, waves. They are used in remote controls for television and other get gadgets. So, the remote control what you are operating is using the infrared radiations. The next is microwaves. The microwave have wavelength in the range 10 to 7 to 10 to 11 m strong and the frequency 3 to 10 to 11 to 3 to 10 to 7 hertz. Source, these waves are produced by electronic devices such as the crystal oscillator. They are used for satellite communication, for analytical uh, analysis of atomic molecular structure, for cooking in microwave ovens and in radar communication. So these are the uses of microwave. Microwave, yes, microwave oven, what the hota, that is using the same principle uh, of microwave radiation, which is going to give you a good amount of heating effect very fast. They are used in satellite communication and radar communication also. The last is the radio waves. These are waves of longest wavelength amongst all the electronic electromagnetic waves. They have wavelength from about 10, 10 meters, that is 10 to 11 m strong, for frequency below 3 into 10 to 7 hertz. They show all properties of electromagnetic waves. Users, these waves are used mainly in radar communication and also in radio and television transmission. So, whatever you listen to, uh, the, when you listen to a radio, what we see is, okay, 91.1 FM, so that 91.1, what is that? That is nothing but the frequency of the wave of that particular uh, radio station. So, 98.3, uh, 98.1, 9, 104.8, that is the megahertz, that is megahertz, that is the frequency at which they are being uh, transmitted. So, the transmission is done with the help of radio waves. Accordingly, there is a distinction between the ultraviolet visible and the infrared radiation. Ultraviolet radiation, these they are wavelength in the range 100 m strong to 4000 m strong. Visible radiation, 4000 to 8000 m strong. Infrared, 8000 to 10 to 7 m strong. Ultraviolet radiation, they are invisible. Invisible light, they are visible and infrared, they are invisible. 
Ultraviolet, they have no heating effect. Visible light, they produce slight heating effect, where infrared or strong heating effect. Ultraviolet radiations affects the photographic plate. Visible radiation also affects the photographic plane, but infrared radiation does not affect the photographic plate. Ultraviolet radiation causes fluorescence in the zinc sulfide screen. Visible light does not cause fluorescence, and infrared also does not cause fluorescence. Ultraviolet radiation causes health hazards like skin cancer. Visible radiation do not have effect on the body. Where infrared, it affects the body, but high dose make does not affect the body, but high dose can cause burning, skin burns. Ultraviolet radiation they can pass through cords, but they do not pass through glass. They are absorbed by the glass. Visible rays they can pass through glass. They are absorbed. They are they can pass through glass. They are not absorbed by the glass, obviously. Infrared is they can pass through rock salt, but they are absorbed. They are not pass through glass. They are absorbed by the glass. So this was the distinction of ultraviolet radiation, visible light, and the infrared radiation. This was about the chapter or the form which was electromagnetic spectrum. We are now left out with a very small part of the chapter. That is the third part. That is scattering of light and its application. So we have got the third part now. So this was anyway. This was the third part anyway. So third video and the third part now, and that is the part which is called a scattering of light and the applications of the scattering of light. So we have over here the applications of scattering. So scattering. of light and its applications <clears throat> so scattering of light when light from the sun enters the earth's atmosphere it scatters that is the light spreads in all direction yes scattering what do you mean by scattering spreading in all directions okay so that is what we know that when it enters see initially it is just traveling straight line So that's the reason it is not illuminating any of the parts in the solar system. But as it enters inside the uh, Earth's atmosphere, it scatters. So that is a spreading of the light. <coughs> the light spreads by the dust particles and the air molecules present in the atmosphere. You may see the path of light, sunlight entering a dark room through a fine hole. Because of the scattering of the sunlight by the sun particles present in its path inside the room, the scattering of light was first studied by the scientist Rayleigh. So you must have seen many times that when you enter into a room which is a dark room, and in the dark room, if there is a small ray of light entering inside, you will find the worst, worst light have we will be able to see that light. Why? Because there will be dust particles seen in that particular uh, ray of light. So that dust particle, what you see in that ray of light, is nothing but the scattering, or we can say that it was first seen by uh, scientist uh, Rayleigh, uh, which is scattering of light. So scattering. So we define scattering as it is a process of absorption and then re-emission of light energy. Okay, scattering is process of absorption and then re-emission of the light. So scattering is the process of absorption and then re-emission of the light energy. The air molecules of size smaller than the wavelength of incident ray absorbs the energy on the incident light and then re-emits it without change in its wavelength. So it is seen that whenever the uh, ray of light, okay, this uh, when the air molecules has got particles in it which has got the size uh, smaller than the wavelength of the incident ray. So when it is smaller than the wavelength of incident ray, उसके बाद तो उधर अटकेगा. और वो एब्जॉर्ब करेगा एंड फिर वो रीएमिट करेगा सो दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्टिकल इज गोइंग टू एब्जॉर्ब दैट लाइट एंड देन रीएमिट दैट लाइट विदाउट चेंजिंग इट्स फ्रीक्वेंसी और वेवलेंथ ऑफ कोर्स फ्रीक्वेंसी कैन नॉट चेंज इट्स द वेवलेंथ विद दिस नॉट चेंज द स्कैटरिंग ऑफ लाइट इज नॉट सेम फॉर ऑल वेवलेंथ्स ऑफ इंसिडेंट लाइट द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ स्कैटर्ड लाइट इज फाउंड टू बी इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द फोर्थ पावर ऑफ वेवलेंथ ऑफ लाइट दैट इज Scattering is proportional to 
So that is why intensity of the scattering is proportional to 1 upon lambda raised to 4. So the fourth power of the uh, wavelength. The wavelength of violet light is least, that is 4000 m strong, and that of red is most 8000 m. Therefore, the incident white light, violet light is scattered most, and the red light is scattered the least. Violet light is scattered nearly 16 times more than the red light. So you can see that the wavelength is double. 4000 m strong is violet, red is 8000. So 4000, 8000, it is double. So 2 raised to 4 is 16. So that's why the intensity or we we'll say scattering intensity of the red light is 16 times less than the scattering of light of the violet color. See, violet color is going to deviate the most, uh, not deviate, so scatter the most, and that's why we have the blue sky. The blue sky is because the white light is completely scattered into the atmosphere, uh, on the, into the uh, sky, whereas the red light is penetrating and going and keeping coming out inside. That, that's the reason we see uh, the sun to be reddish in color at uh, the sunrise and sunset. As a result, the light from the sun which reaches on the earth's surface has less intensity of light of violet end such as the blue indigo and violet and much more intensity of light of red end such as orange and red. However, the air molecules of size bigger than the wavelength of incident rays scatter the light of all wavelengths of light in the same extent. So, those particles which are bigger than the wavelength of the light, those particles which are bigger, they will scatter everything. So, they will scatter even the red light and the violet and green everything. Okay. So, they will scatter everything with ease. But, the little ones, they will scatter much more the violet light rather than the red light. Some applications of scattering. So, this was about the part of the scattering, what is scattering, what is happening, what is happening, and what is happening, what is happening. So, yes, scattering of red light will be least and that of violet will be most. This is the simplest or the most important thing what you need to remember. Other things, chalta hai. yeah, of course, definition of scattering is important. Some applications of scattering. Some effects of scattering of sunlight by the earth atmosphere are red color of the sun at sunrise and sunset. White color of the sky at the noon, blue color of the sky, black color of the sky in absence of atmosphere, white color of clouds and use of red color for the danger signal. So these are the six very important applications of the scattering of light and these are also the questions for give reason in your question paper. So, yes, we need to be very sure that what is should we write in the reason over here. So, we'll go by one by one with each and every uh, example or the application given to you so that we can understand what we need to write in the give reason of such a question. First one, red color of sun at sunrise and sunset. Okay, this is the first one. At the time of sunrise and sunset, the light from the sun has to travel the longest distance of the atmosphere to reach the observer. So what we see is that this is the earth's surface and this is the atmospheric surface. Now the sun is over here. So the sun rays, not here, it is slightly below. This is the earth and this is the atmosphere part. So when the sun is over here, that is Either here, the sunrise ke point, this because this is the horizon, so just above the horizon. At that time, the sun needs to travel, the light of the sun needs to travel the longest distance because this is the longest distance over here. This is because it is tapering. See, here is the shortest distance. This is only short distance. This is the long distance over here. Okay, this is not the width over here. It is like diagonally. Uh, so, this is going to be much longer distance over here. So, when it needs to travel the longest distance, so it seems that, that since the blue light of short wavelength is scattered more, much uh, of it is lost while the red light of long wavelength is scattered a little, so it is not much lost. So what happens is, the blue colored light which is coming over here, it gets so much scattered that it is not able to reach or penetrate through the earth's atmosphere. Hence, it gets scattered out. Whereas, the red is able, which is not 
deviating more or we can say it is not scattering more it is going to pass this particular layer and reach the earth's surface and hence we see the sun to be reddish in color so since the blue light of short wavelength is scattered more much of it is lost while the red color light of the long wavelength is scattered a little so it is not much lost thus blue light is almost absent in sunlight reaching the observer and only the red that is white minus blue is red light reaches us as a result the sun and the region nearby it is seen red also the scattering of the blue light so that is the figure shows the scattering of the blue light so they have already given that figure may blue light jo hai it is going to get scattered over here it is going to get scattered over here itself so because it is getting scattered it is not reaching the earth surface so that was the first question the second one is white color of the sky at noon so at noon what happens it's noon the sun is over here so it is just coming straight when it is coming straight what is the angle it is making with the uh, atmosphere perpendicular and what happens when refraction when it is perpendicular it is not going to get refracted at all so no deviation nothing hence the white light doesn't get dispersed yeah that is what we are see at noon sun is directly above our head so we get the sun light rays directly from the sun after traveling the shortest distance without much scattering at any particular color so no the because it is a very short distance because just overhead so that's why it is a very short distance which needs to be traveled by the uh, light so and that's why the scattering is not there for any color hence the sky is seen white next is blue color of the sky the light from the sun has to travel a long distance from the earth surface before reaching the us as light travels through the atmosphere it gets scattered in different directions by the air molecules present in its path the blue light due to its short wavelength is scattered more as compared to the red light of the long wavelength thus the light reaching our eye directly from the sun is red in rich in red color while the light reaching our eye from other direction is scattered blue light therefore the sky in the direction other than the direction of the sun is seen blue so you can see that when you the sun is over here when it is traveling over here the red is going to come over here we see this area to be red but this area from where the light is not coming is the one which has got dispersed so this not this area we can talk about this area because this is what we see this is the atmosphere area this is the sky what we see this is not the sky so whatever we see over here this will be red in color this area will be red in color but this over here will be blue because so the area which from where the sun is not there will be appearing blue because the blue light has scattered in those lower areas so all those area the blue light has got scattered in the atmosphere so if all the sky in direction other than the direction of sun is seen blue further after the sunset and before the sunrise there is no sunlight reaching directly to us then the blue scattered light makes the entire sky to appear blue so then the uh, so when there is no sunlight so after the sunrise and sunset when there is no red color light entering into the earth's atmosphere reaching us you see the whole sky to be blue and you do not see any kind of a red color there so the appear scattered light may be appear in the sky to appear the sky to be blue question 4 of the application 4 is black color of the sky in absence of atmosphere if there would have been no atmosphere there would have been no scattering of light and no scattered light would reach our eye and thus the sky would appear black instead of blue so if there is no scattering of light that means there is no particles because if it is in in the space in the space you can see or we can see in the sky if the if there are no particles there is no scattering if there is no particle no scattering no scattering means no blue color so that's why the uh, whole thing will appear black so in presence in absence of atmosphere there is no particles and hence it will appear black since there is no atmosphere on moon therefore no scattered sunlight reaches the moon surface hence to an observer on the surface of the moon no light reaches the eye of the observer kept except the light reaching directly from the sun thus that sky is in direction other than the sun will appear black 
to the observer on the moon's surface. Similarly, when an astronaut goes above the atmosphere on the uh, to the Earth, uh, uh, atmosphere of the Earth in a rocket, he sees the sky black, but to him the Earth appears blue due to the blue color of the sunlight scattered by the Earth's atmosphere reaching him. The stars and other heavenly bodies are usual are seen as usual, but without twinkling. The next is white colors of the cloud. The clouds are near the Earth's surface and they contain dust particles and aggregates of water molecules of size bigger than the wavelengths. And we know that if it is bigger than the wavelength of the light, it is going to scatter everything. So, bigger than the wavelength of the visible light, therefore the dust particles and the tiny ice particles present in the clouds scatter all colors of the uh, incident white light from sun to the ex same extent and hence when the scattered light reaches our eye, the clouds are seen white because all of them are scattered simultaneously so there is no spreading of the light there is no dispersion taking place uh, whatever is taking place is only scattering of all the light and that's why it is white in color use of red light or the danger signal in a visible light the red the wavelength of red color is longest therefore light of the red color is scattered least by the air molecules of the atmosphere we have seen that Red color has got the least deviation, and also because it got the uh, uh, because of its scattering the least, that's why it can pass through the atmosphere much longer distances. Hence, the light of the red color, as compared to the light of other colors, can penetrate to a longer distance without becoming weak. Thus, red light can be seen from far distance, farthest distance in comparison to light of other colors and the same intensity so if lights are of the same intensity red can be seen from a much further distance and that is why the red signals are there uh, the signals are made red because red signal can be seen from along so person can know that the signal is red so he should slow down and should not uh, speed up to reach that particular signal Hence, red light is used as danger signal so that the signal may be visible from a far distance even in fog etc Similarly, remote control of gadget, uh, electrical gadgets like TV etc. also make use of infrared radiations because they do not deviate too much or they do not scatter too much. So that's why they can pinpoint a particular ray of light and that's why they are used for remote controls for devices. So that was the uh, applications and the scattering of light. Right, this very easy and small chapter, but yes, there are questions of give reason asked from this particular chapter. No doubt, no, they are only a one one mark each, uh, max to max two marks in some cases. No, not not two marks, always one mark. So uh, you do not expect it for two marks. But yeah, you will have to write in short about this thing that due to scattering of light, or the what are the reason behind this particular phenomena taking place. So that was about the chapter. Uh, spectrum so with this video we end the chapter spectrum so accordingly now we have completed all the uh, three parts of the chapter light of the light section of the uh, syllabus that was the refraction of plane surfaces uh, which we did in our class then the, the refraction through lenses which were just the videos before this ones and the video three videos of the scattering of light that, uh, sorry spectrum so this was about the light part of the physics syllabus. Thank you.